breathe, that means the air very much is the breath of God. It's the life of God. Amen. Oh, y'all don't hear Amen. me. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? The air very much is just like the spirit of God. You can't see it, but it's in all of us. Cover your nose and your mouth and don't use it and see what it happened to you. Uh -huh. huh? And God breathed into man. God breathed. So this very air that we breathe in is God's air. God's breath. Oh, come on, huh? Now, 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 now she talk. Hold, hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. Let's try to get it. Let's imagine God sitting on the throne, right? And God breathing out, just like us, like, right? And our air fills. You ever be in a car and your, your air, your cloud fogs up the window? Right? Now, imagine God's air coming out here. He's God, Almighty God, right? So his air is going all over the world. Yes. And because I try. and because God's air is all over the world, we're all breathing God's yeah. air. Huh? We're breathing from God. Huh? And, when we, and we're on borrowed time and don't even know it. Huh? And, the, and the very things that we learn of God is because he's given it. Because we don't know him, so he comes to reveal to us. Can I get a witness? Yes. So we got to keep on feeding to him because we've been born, but we've been born in the world of sin. So since we were born in the world of Satan, Satan's job is to keep us educated against God. Yes. Everything we learn in the world is for the world alone, which is Satan's world. But at the end, if we don't learn how to go above, we have never really graduated. We're graduating all the time without never really graduating. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Huh? We're graduating all the time. We're getting smarter all the time, but never really getting smarter if we don't know God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. now, the Bible says now faith is. The presence of God in you is right now. Uh -huh. It's the evidence of God. You got to believe it because God put it in you. And you got to stand on it regardless of what other evidence goes against it. Yeah. Stand on God. Yeah. Because in you and in the belief, if it's in you, is the fact that you know by a, amen, a concentration by the Spirit of God, is God putting you convicted that God made all things. All things. Uh -huh. All things. Yeah. Huh? And without him was not anything made that was made. Uh -huh. Go ahead, brother. Uh -huh. Still, man. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. All right. So now what we see visibly is not made by the visible. It's made by the invisible, which is God. But the invisible God has made things visible through us. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Yeah. But everything that's visible comes from the invisible. Uh -huh. Oh, come on. Yeah. Huh? Go ahead, brother. Yeah. All right. Four. By faith. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. All right, now going back to Genesis chapter four, Abel, by believing in God, offered a better sacrifice. And if you believe in God, see, it's going to be more than just talk. We're going to have to offer a sacrifice. That's why Romans chapter twelve says, "I uh, beg you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a what? Living sacrifice, sacrifice. not a dead sacrifice, but a living yeah. sacrifice." holy and acceptable unto God. So that means we got to try to get holy. And the only way we can get holy is by staying connected to God because we're unholy without God, without Christ. But the more we get closer in the relationship, he molds us. See, see, God is, the, is like a man and a woman in a relationship. See, even man, we're not homosexual, but I'm just showing you as the, as the metaphor. We're all like the bride, right? And he's a bridegroom. You got to listen to the man in order for you to get where you need to go. Praise the Lord. The agenda didn't change. See, Satan changed the agenda. But with God, you got to follow the bridegroom so you can be a correct bride. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Because he's going to make you holy. But if you don't obey him, you can't be holy. And God does not like unholiness. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. So if you want to please God, the joy of the Lord is your what? Your strength. So when God sees you being strength, when you fight to be obedient to God, right? When you fight to be obedient to God's rules and regulations, regardless of what the world is saying. Because the world is the majority. But you're not supposed to go by the majority. You're supposed to go by what God said. Because he said, wide and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. But straight and narrow is the way that leads to what? Righteousness. And few there be that find me. The Broadway always is where everybody's at. But just because there's a lot of people on that road. See, we worry about being embarrassed. Well, 
I'm by myself. Uh, if I stand for this, I'm not going to look popular. I don't care about being popular. I want to make it to heaven. There's going to be a whole lot of beating you in hell. That's, that's, that's popular. Hey, we're all going to you. I used to hear people say, well, if I go to hell, a lot of people want to, I don't want to go there. Oh, when them people was in that club, it was popular to go to that club, right? But when that man started shooting them bullets, they was making telephone calls. They wanted to get up out of there. Praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. You, you hear what I'm saying? Amen. They were, I mean, some people, if you had told them to stay home, they wasn't going to stay home. I got to go to the club. Huh? I don't care whether it's a gay club or a straight club. I'm talking about all over, right? But when somebody starts shooting them bullets and start killing you, I bet you want to get up out of there. Praise the Lord. So this is how the world is. See, long as things are going the way the world wants, but in the world, is see, that's how the devil sets you up. So the devil said, come on, come on, come on, come on. But the devil's job is to rob you, kill you, and destroy you. John 10 and 10. But Jesus said, I come that you might have light uh -huh. and have it more abundantly. Go ahead, give me, brother. Okay. Please. I think we have verse 5. Yes. We are Hebrews chapter 11, I think we have verse 5. All right, can you say, by faith you was the man as a righteous man. That's still forth. Uh, that's still talking about Abel? Yes. Okay, as a righteous man, Kate, Kate, Abel, not Cain, Abel stood forth as a righteous man by the faith because his brother killed him. And why did his brother kill him? Because he didn't have the faith. He didn't have the same belief. He was worldly. So he looked at his brother serving God, and God even told Cain, all you have to do is do the right thing. Some people hate you in your own family. And if it's in your family, what do you think outside the family? Cain killed his own, come on, there's this nothing new, that stuff that's going on in the world. This started there. Cain killed his own brother just because he was a servant of God. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? He killed them just because he was a servant of God. And because he was too rebellious as his brother to do what was right. I'm not going to do what's right, so I'd rather kill you so I don't see you doing right to make me look bad. Because you're making me look bad. Not because you mean to, but because you're trying to obey dad. You're trying to obey mom. You're trying to obey the Lord. So that makes me look bad. So I hate you. That's Satan. And it's, that's in people's nature like that. On the job, in the family, in the neighborhood, wherever you go. Some people just hate you. Go ahead. In fact, Matthew 10, 22, Jesus said, all men would hate you. Because of me. When he said all, oh, that means all men that are not saved. They hate you. Even if people say they love you, they hate you. Because the world's love is not real love. See, I have to bring these down. Because see, listen, this mediocre stuff that we've been going through the organized church, we've been going to church, some people have been going to church all their life. And then haven't done nothing for them yet. Because they just get caught up into this, who's the mega preacher? Who's the man? Who makes the mega bus? See, because it's like, because because church, organized church has become like our clothes now. Who who can afford the name brand? Huh? Who can afford the name brand suits? The name brand dresses? The name brand sneakers? The name brand hats? The name brand socks? Even my watch is name brand. My ring is name brand. My earrings is name brand. Even my drawers and my panties are name brand. That's how we become. So in an organized church, it's like, oh, my, my preacher is, is top chef. Y'all y'all know what I'm saying, huh? Yeah. So we so we we so busy trying to be name brand, we forgot that the brand name is Jesus Christ, is Lord. And God said that yeah. through Jesus that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am. But we become like Satan yeah. just using God's name to do uh -huh. Satan's work, uh -huh. competing yeah. against one another. When Jesus said, love ye one another. Yes. Oh, come on. Jesus. All right, go ahead, brother. We, we at the sixth verse yet? No, we're still on, uh, we're still on, uh, on, on the four. All right, we are on four? Uh -huh. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, verse four. When God spoke well of this offering, of his offering. All right, God spoke well of Abel's offering. Mm -hmm. That's it, by faith. Say, and by faith, he still speaks, even though, even though he is dead. All right, so... It's saying that even Abel, so Abel still speaks even though Abel is dead. 
other people who have died in Christ still speak. That's why we look at the scriptures and the scriptures say that the scriptures are for admonition because we look for how people live and how they die. Because if you live righteous, you don't die. You rest in the Lord. Like Lazarus. When he died, what did Jesus come to do? Lazarus, come forth, right? If we die in Christ, he's going to call your name. Come forth. Can I get a witness? Amen. All right, go ahead, brother. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Now, five right? It says, um, by faith Enoch. By faith Enoch, the one that was taken up. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. He was taken from his life. All right, he was taken from this life. From this life, right. So that he did not experience death. All right, there you go. Enoch never experienced death. He went with God. Now, how we explain, we don't have to. But if the scriptures say that he went with God, he went with God. That's God's business, right? Hey, I want to be like Enoch. Hey, take me up, huh? Save me like uh, Luke 20. Uh, what did I say to y'all before? Um, Luke 21, 36, I think it is, says, Pray you that you be counted worthy to escape these things. So you can escape. But we have to be serious with God. Can I get a witness? Man. All right, go ahead. The keys. The key is Jesus. The keys are Jesus. Can I get a witness? Man. All right, go ahead. All right, let me see. He not was taken up from this life. So that he did not experience death, he could not be found. All right, they couldn't find Enoch nowhere because it just said he was taken by God. Is that right? So how are you going to find what God takes? You can't. And praise the Lord. Go ahead. God had taken him away. Oh, oh, I just said that, right? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Um, for before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. All right, at, before Enoch was taken up, he was one that was commended as one that pleased God. Praise the Lord. That's what we want to do. We want to try to please God. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 Lord, I want the Lord to be happy, so we got to keep trying. Because guess what? And listen, I said something the other day. And I'm saying to you all today, I know we get tired and I know we get exhausted by trying to go to work, put money in our pocket, put food on the table and all that. That's for the world. We better pray to God from extra strength because what? guess what? We haven't done enough for the Lord. I'm going to tell you why. Because there's a scripture that says, if the righteous scarcely make it in. Did you hear that word? What was the key word that I just used? Scarcely. scarcely. Say that again. Scarcely. Do you know what scarcely means? You got an idea. What does you think scarcely means? Slim chance. Huh? Slim By a slim chance. Just made it in. Probably wasn't going to make it in, but Jesus said, come on in because at least you called on my name. So we didn't make it. We won't make it by any great margin. It won't be nothing to brag about. Like Ephesians 2 and 8. By faith, through grace, are you saved? It is the gift of God, least no man can boast. Because God got to give you faith, he has to give you grace, and you have to walk in those two gifts, faith and grace, in order that he will even be pleased. Which would mean, it's like when Jesus said, if you are ashamed to admit me before men, watch what he said, I'm going to be ashamed to admit you before my father. So when you be a man or a woman that says, listen, I'm not trying to be no boss, no preacher, no, no, I'm just trying to be a woman or a man of God in my life. I'm just witnessing to you because God is good. I want you to go to heaven just like I'm trying to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And if we don't never start trying, mm -hmm. how will we ever get there? Can I get a witness? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because this is the time right now to start giving. Because the righteous are going to scarcely make it in. And then the rest go, where will the sinners and ungodly go? If the righteous just made it in. And they made it in by Jesus. Because he said, I am what? The way? The truth? And the what? The light. So if we don't follow Jesus, we're not going either. And if the righteous scarcely make it in, where are the sinners going to go? We already know we're straight to hell. We, and then they'll say, who are you to tell me I'm going to hell? I'm not telling you that's where you're going for, uh, according to my word. That's what the Bible said. But you can change. You can, if it bothers you, make a U-turn. Can I get a witness? Don't get angry with me. Make a U-turn. You have the wrong keys. You're going in the wrong direction. Get the keys from Jesus and come on and let's try to make it to heaven together and motivate one another. Hey, man, let's don't go to hell. Let's make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. Hebrews um, 11 verse 11 and 6. This is the last verse of that. Go ahead. Without faith. Without faith. It is impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith without faith without faith it's impossible 
to please God. You have to have faith. So God gives you the faith because he says without faith, the, the apostles are saying, you can't, you can't please God without faith. So God gives you faith. According to Romans 12, he gives to everyone a measure of faith. So you have to build on the faith that God gives you. And how do you build on faith? By being obedient. Because if you're not walking in faith, you're not pleasing God. So when we walk worldly, we're not pleasing God. Oh, do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. But we must believe. I think it goes on to say, for we must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder yes. to those that diligently, am I correct, brother? Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Right. So we must believe that God is All right. and that he's a rewarder. Rewarder means right. giver. He's a giver to those that diligently seek him. So earnestly seek him. So that means you can't just seek him on Sunday. Yeah. Or Saturday. Uh -huh. Or when you get to feel like it. Uh -huh. You have to, Lord, why are you washing the dishes? Hey, Lord, I need you. Yeah. Driving down the road. Hi, y'all. Lord, I need you. Huh? Uh -huh. Walking, I need you. Driving. If you fly, flying, I need you. If you're on the boat, I need you. If you're on a skateboard, Lord, I need you. If you're on a bicycle, if you don't have no legs, no arm, if you just can think of the Lord, Lord, I need you. I need you to save me. And he puts that in you. He said, you weren't, you didn't call me. I called you. Right so when you start calling on the Lord, because we'll say, I sought the Lord. Yeah, you sought the Lord because he sought you. Amen. Can I get away with it? And when you, yes. see, when you come to find that out, you'll be like, wow, I would never have been able to seek after the Lord if he had not sought after me. But since he sought after me, he put something inside me, the yes. faith inside me, the grace inside me, and told me to run on, to make a connection yes. with him. Yes. I yes. love you with an everlasting love. Thank I'm God. calling you. I'm trying to make this connection. I'm yes. pursuing you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you can run away. Lord have mercy. Huh? See, the Lord can pursue you, but you can deny the Lord. Huh? It's like a man pursuing a woman. You can pursue the woman, but if she don't want you, eventually you might have to get it in your head to stop pursuing it. A woman can pursue a man. Praise the Lord. So, because how will a man or a woman know that you want that man or that woman unless you make an advancement toward him, right? God wants you to know, I, I want, God wants you to know that he loves you. So he makes the advancement towards you yes. now and towards me. Now we must make the advancement towards him. Otherwise, we stay in the world in our relationship with the world. And yeah. if we stay in our relationship with the world, he may come after us, pursue us, but after a while, he's going to give us like Romans chapter 1, a reprobate mind. You wanted to stay in the world? I pursued you. Now I'm leaving you right where you're at. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Y'all understand what I'm saying? All right. Uh, I gave one of you uh, John, and I gave one of you uh, Corinthians. So we'll go to John first. Go to John. John 6. John 6. 43. No man. <coughs> no man. John chapter 6, verse 43. We're leaving from um, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Now we're going to St. John chapter 6, verse 43. Jesus answered and said unto them, said unto them, don't mumble among yourself. Don't argue among yourself. 43. No man can come to me. No one. No man can come to me. Father, Except my father draws him. Has sent me for him. Yeah, I jumped the gun, but that's what it said. No man, no woman, nobody can come to Jesus except the Father who is in heaven draws you to Jesus. That's how I, I go by the Bible. Uh -huh. If you following some other God and you don't believe in the Lord, you have that right. But still, don't don't bug me. I'm coming to Jesus. Come on, huh? And I, I'm having a hard enough struggle, amen, staying with Jesus. Can I get a witness? I don't want to hear about your Allah. I don't want to hear about Buddha, school and Luda, nobody. I don't want to hear about the president. I want to hear about the man. I need more Jesus. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Do what you got to do. I'm not stopping you from doing what you do. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. But don't get in my way. Because I'm trying to follow the way, the truth, and the life. Can I get a witness? All right, All right go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. All right, no one can come to Jesus unless his father, Almighty God, Jehovah, draws him. And then he will raise them up at the last day. That was 43 and 44? Huh? Yeah. 
Yes. All right, now give me 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. All right, the spirit which is God. It is God's spirit that quickeneth. That means that touches you. Mm -hmm. The flesh profits nothing. The flesh does not profit anything. Uh -huh. And we've been over this sometime before. Mm -hmm. I don't care who, what, when, where, why, or how. Mm -hmm. No matter who we are in the world, what we have, what we do, that's just for the world. And that's beautiful. But we're talking about being born again to get to heaven. And so when we're talking about what Jesus said, the priorities for the world is one thing. But the priorities for God are another. Okay? You can't open new doors with what? Say it out loud. Huh? You can't open new doors with what? So you need the keys of the Lord to open the doors of the Lord. And he said, I am the door. Yes. If anyone try to come in some other way, he's a thief and a I am the way, right? Uh -huh. And when he gave Peter the keys in Matthew 16, this is why we follow the mindset of the Bible and the apostles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. We study them to find out what were they going through. What was their experience? Do you understand what I'm saying? And we try to follow it right now today as close as we can because we recognize they sat with Jesus. Oh, yeah. They ate with Jesus. They walked and talked with Jesus. Can I get a witness? They experienced with Jesus. So who would know more than them? Can I get a witness? And it says the flesh profited nothing. So it's not about the flesh. And this goes back to John chapter 3 where he said you must be born of the water and the spirit. So when we were in the water, when we were born in the one first time, right? They said the water had to break from the mom, right? Mm -hmm. But now we need the spiritual water. Huh? Amen. John chapter 7 verse 38 and they said, he that believeth on the Lord as the scripture have said. Out of his, it don't say his or her, but when it says his, it means everyone that come from him. Because everything comes from man, right? Out of his belly shall flow wells of living water. And this he spoke of the Holy Spirit, which John, I mean, which Peter, who denied the Lord but got stronger, the one who built the church on set upon his rock and on Pentecost, he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken of the Old Testament. They shall speak with no tongue, uh -huh. prophesy, uh -huh. love the Lord, uh -huh. give testimony that God is real. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 33 to 40. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh -huh. What's 43 this? 33 says. 33. 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, so that means Satan.